So welcome to episode 14. We're back in the boho room. This is our spare room and we've done it in the boho style. This was my inspiration, this beautiful watercolor rug mat. And so I've tried to bring those elements into this room and you're going to see in a moment what we did with our nightstands. This was a wire frame bed that we've painted and I've got it half waxed. And I have to tell you, when I had it painted in this beautiful Antibi screen, I really didn't want to dark wax it because it was so fresh and clean. But then I realized if I'm staying true to the boho theme, boho is as old as I am. It's a child of the 60s. It came out as part of a, a bit of a response to the hippie movement with beautiful colors, lots of jewel tones. But it also has a, a background in sort of the Moroccan and the Turkish elements. Deep purples, deep jewel greens and blues. And it's been around for a long time, one way or another. We just maybe call it something different. So I started to dark wax. And I find a bed frame is a bit of a challenge. So what I did was, and I'm just going to show you because it certainly helped me and it might help you. I propped, I screwed my headboard back to the frame and I propped it up so it's off the floor. It made it so much easier. I didn't have to worry about getting paint all the way down and missing a spot. I could drop the paint all the way down and I still have a nice space. The same was true for waxing. When I started waxing this, you want to get wax everywhere so your look is the same. And what it does is it gives it a real antique look. I'm using Annie's Dark Wax. It's a brown. And you're going to have to really work it into the green. And it starts out looking so dark. But one thing that's really nice about this color is that you can tell where you haven't been. It shows up as bright green if you don't have any wax on it. And since we want this bed to have a look that's all the same, I'm going to really work it in. And it's surprising how you did have to work in on something that is metal and round. I don't want big globs of wax but I do want a nice even coverage. The brush did a great job of working in where the wires come together, where the metal tubing comes together. And of course I did the back of it as well. I do the front and then do the back. And I did them at the same time. So then I need to buff it. And when I buff it, I want to get a beautiful shine. So I'm just going to wipe off the excess wax. Wipe it all back. And I want to wipe particularly where I might not get to buff right away because it will continue to stain and I don't want it to be stained darker than the rest of it, so I just kind of wiped that away. And then I'm just going to buff. And the shine comes almost instantly. Take my cloth and just go around and where the wires or the cord or the tubing comes together. So I give it a good buff and then I would take a clean cloth and I will buff it all over to give it a really good shine. So that is the dark wax, but the, the difference is quite dramatic and it really does give me the sense of an antiqued bed. But then because it's boho, there's a little bit of glitz to it. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the gilding that we did here using the metal foil, the gold foil, we're going to do that right here. So I'm going to give you a quick lesson in that. So we're going to do gold leaf. Gold leaf comes in a package like this and you can get it at craft stores. It comes in tissue paper and it actually is a leaf of fine gold. So you can get copper, silver, antique gold. But the first step is gold sizing. This is a glue 
for metal leafing. And you're just going to use a fine brush or whatever brush you need. You have to paint it on and you see that it's all white. We're going to paint it on. We're going to leave it for 10 minutes or so, move to our end tables. And when we come back, or our bedside tables, I should say, when we come back, this will have gone clear and sticky and we'll be ready to put the leaf on it. If I try and do it now, the leaf isn't going to stick. It's going to pull right back off because this actually needs to set up. It's a bit like contact cement that way, if you've ever used that. And the signal that it's ready is that it's no longer this milky white. It's all clear and shiny. So you don't need a whole lot on this, just there we go. Make sure I have good coverage everywhere. If I don't have this on here, then the gold won't stick. And I also don't want to have it where I don't want the metal leaf to stick. So you can see that that's a white milky color. And we're going to leave that, move on to the end tables, side table, and we'll come back. So our gold sizing, which is what we need in order to adhere this leaf to metal or anything, it's between two pieces of tissue and it's extremely fine. It is very fine sheets of gold. If you have any glue in your hands, you're going to wish you didn't because everything sticks. But you're just going to lay it on and you use a dry brush and you work it in. It will tear away wherever there's it's been adhered and then the glue, I, I'm just going to rip it right off the back here and move this piece over, stick it on again. So what's going to happen is I'm going to put it all in here, let it dry and come back and wax it. It does need to dry. You can see it just tears off. So I'll put that piece right here. It won't be perfect. That's kind of something that's important to keep in mind. You're going to see a little bit of the green through it because the glue doesn't dry evenly everywhere. The leaf doesn't always stick to it. Once it is dry, you're going to brush away all the loose leaf that isn't adhered because you don't want that to come off once you start your waxing. And it's funny, you end up with all these little tiny pieces. It looks like you were opening some sort of foil candy and it went crazy. And I don't want it there on the metal because I don't have, that's not where I want to see it. I'm just using a brush to just poke it in and make sure that it gets attached everywhere. But when I give this a little bit of a dark wax, it's going to just give it a little bit of glitz. And I just go back over until I think I have covered all of the green that I can see. And then I'll just let it dry and brush away all the loose bits. So this is gold leafing. And if you didn't want to get into gold leafing, we do have the gilding wax, which gives you something very similar, not quite as dramatic. Leafing is still um, a very beautiful way to finish something. It has just a little bit of detail, a little bit of glitz and something that's quite dark. So this is one of two bedside tables. We are going to do a little bit of decoupage here and a little bit of decorative painting. So to decoupage, I've cut, oops, move this out of here. I've cut hummingbirds, butterflies, and boho birds out of decorative papers. You use a special decoupage glue 
and you just brush the glue on wherever it is you want to put something. So my theme in this room, besides the boho, is I'm using the birds. So I'm going to put another bird down here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to brush on my decoupage glue where I want to put my bird. So rather than brush the paper and then put the attach it, it's much easier to brush the surface and then attach your bird or whatever it is you want to put on there. And I want just a little bright bird. I just want to make sure I get it all there. So I'm going to just make sure I have glue everywhere I need it to be. And then I'm going to take the decoupage glue and go over it. And this is what's sealing my bird or anything that I choose to decoupage to the surface. You're probably going to do this about three times, three or four times, because you're trying to create an almost seamless edge so that when you wax it, there's nothing to get caught. And I notice that particularly tails and tips, things like that, want to come back up. So I tuck a little glue back there and then use the brush to kind of push it down. So I'm going to put a bird there. And then, just for fun, let's turn this around. And I'm going to put a butterfly. I'm expecting that because this is a guest room, we're going to have children who sometimes stay with us or people who are young at heart. And I honestly, I think that's what boho is. It's a lot about the young at heart. So I am going to put a butterfly here. The butterfly was nice to decoupage because it didn't have any little tips or points that stuck out. Be generous with it. It needs to be squished right in. There we go. So once this has been decoupaged three or four times and is set nicely, then I'm going to wax right over the top of it. But the other thing I wanted to do in this room to make it, to make to do to make this kind of fun was I wanted to paint grass. I found these a little bit kind of dull all by themselves. They're very pretty, but they're a little bit dull. So I thought it might be kind of fun to paint grass growing on the side. So I'm going to show you how I did that. So I have four brushes and these are inexpensive artist brushes, but I do need something with a fine tip. And I have four different greeny blues. I'm using Lem Lem. I have Amsterdam Green. I'm using my Antibes Green that's been the basis for everything. And I'm using Provence. This was a mixture of Louis Blue and Antibes Green and it's a beautiful color. I just found that it needed a little something and so I decided the little something was grass. And grass is so easy to paint. Just dip your brush and flick it up. You can't see it until you really get started, but it's probably flicking up about four inches. We're gonna go all the way along here, and I'm just gonna keep coming back, and I want my brush to kind of flatten out as I'm doing, because of course, grass is flat blades. I'm gonna go all along with my Antibes Green first, that's the color I sort of want as my background color. And I have to tell you, this was a press board nightstand, and it only took one coat to cover, which I found interesting, because normally wood seems to take two coats, but the press board only took one.
And you really, you do not need to be an artist to do this. It's faster if you sort of puddle your paints so that you have them all ready to go because you're going to do a little bit of blending as you go along once you get to the, the end here. And as we get near the end of this video series, it's been fun to kind of concentrate on things that are a little bit more whimsical instead of just painted furniture. So now I'm going to take a larger brush and I'm going to dip it into my Amsterdam and I'm going to flatten the brush out a bit. I want this to come as a, a little darker color like roots, like underneath the greens. And it doesn't matter if they blend a little bit. They're all greens. They're going to look great. Some of them are going to be taller. Some of them are going to be shorter. Nice flat colors, nice flat look I should say. And I filled in a little bit where some of the Antibes green isn't. The thing when you're doing this is you're going to you're going to go so far then you're going to stand back and look at it. And when I did that the first time I knew I needed a different color and that's when I went to my Florence because I needed something a little bit more blue. And this gave me it. Now I'm not using it quite as much. A little bit more of the whimsy. This is so much fun to do in a kid's room. So I like that. I'm going to do a little bit more right there. The last color we're using is Lem Lem, and Lem Lem is a very pale yellowy green. So I used it a little bit more sparingly, and I took it up, and then I made, just used little dots of it, just to create something that might be growing in the grass that's not grass. Or a grass that flowers. This is obviously grass that hasn't been mowed because it's different heights. It's meadow grass. When you're painting something like this that's kind of artistic, go so far and then stand back and look at it. You're never going to be this close to it when it's actually in your room. It's going to be, this is going to be on the floor. So you're going to stand back and you're going to see, do I have enough? And because I have a ladybug sister, I'm probably going to add a few ladybugs in here just for fun when I, when I get to that point. So I'm going to look at that. One thing I want to do is soften a little bit of the lem lem at the base. I don't want to see a lump of paint. So I'm just going to go back and just soften that base and then stand back and look at it. I'll go around and I'll do the front and the other side. We're going to add another layer of decoupage glue so that this is all glued down and it will take three or four. They take about 20 minutes to dry in between. And then I'm going to clear wax the whole thing. But one thing else I wanted to show you was what I did with the drawer handles for this. So this is the hardware that was on this bedside table. You can see it's kind of a faux brass finish and it's a little bit too strong and a little bit too dated for this look. So I looked at my colors and I thought I'm gonna pull one of these colors out because we're on this blue green theme in this room. So I did a coat of Florence and I really like it. The Florence is, this is the first coat. It takes two. To cover completely so I'm going to show you that. You can see here's the first without any. You can see there are little hints of the metal coming through here but this was my final coat 
and I'll let this sit for another day. I want this really good and dry, and then I'm going to clear wax it. But does it ever look sharp? on my drawers. It just pulls another blue into the room. And when we finish this room, it will be, the bedding will be the, have the Bohemian theme. They are, I'm looking for a lamp still. I did find a dresser. And the way we're going to paint that dresser is actually going to be part of a fall series we are planning. So that means you have to stay tuned and come back in the fall. But we're almost finished this series. We have taken you through six rooms and six different styles. We're going to take two weeks off and we're going to come back and do a wrap up and reveal of how each room turned out. So thank you for joining us through the series and we hope to see you for the reveal. to learn more about the paint techniques and color mixing that we've done using our Annie Sloan paint at our At Home with Kathy series, join us at one of our hands-on live workshops at the store, Absolutely Fabulous at Home. Just find us on our website and sign up for a class.